Hi, I'm Jim W6LG with Ham Radio Basics. It's May 23rd, 2019. It's my 70th birthday. And after 56 years, 57 years of amateur radio, I don't know that I fully understand or frankly believe in RF grounding at the station. And we'll talk about that and how I think you should ground your station right after this. The National Electric Code is the code used by most jurisdictions across the country, and unfortunately, it's not an easy read. Because of that, uh, there are sources like www.mikeholt, M-I-K-E-H-O-L-T dot com. Mike Holt is the uh, expert on the NEC, and he has some great videos. The website is chock full of just great, it's a great website. All kinds of information. I reached out to his company and he responded uh, a few days later offering to help and he did help. Grounding, RF grounding, bonding, earthing, um, ground loops, all those things are pretty confusing. Uh, discussions in the NEC are not an easy read. So Mike has done a number of videos on those subjects and broken it down into more easily understood bits and parts and pieces with uh, great descriptions. He gave me permission to use some of his graphics, and I have. I've modified them slightly to fit our needs, uh, moved things around, added rotator cables and control cables for switches and some other things to fit what you might see in, in, a, uh, in a typical ham radio station. In any case... And turn around, move the, uh, the video over to what's on the screen, and we'll go through a series of slides discussing grounding, earthing, and that difficult, and maybe doesn't exist, RF grounding. So let's take a look. This is a pretty typical situation at most houses. There's a pole transformer. There's a ground rod at the base of that pole. There's an electrical panel on the house. There are breakers inside that panel. The bus bars are tied together. The uh, neutral and ground bus bars are connected, and those are connected to a grounding conductor that goes to a ground rod or an oofer ground or a water pipe ground. In this drawing, I've shown just in, in ground rod or earth rod. And from there, it branches out to the electrical outlets the typical electrical panel either has an earthing rod or ground rod, an oofer ground, or a buried water pipe. If there's a buried water pipe, typically it needs to be 20 feet long. And of course, that's becoming less and less uh, common because uh, water pipes are typically not lead pipes anymore or steel pipes or galvanized pipes. Uh, they're often some kind of plastic pipe. So uh, we're not going to see that as often in a resin's. Next kind of ground is an oofer ground, named for a guy who worked for the, um, uh, the government during World War II, and his name was Ufer, U-F-E-R. Basically, a uh, conductor is tied to the rebar in the footing. Typically, that rebar needs to be 20 feet long. And what most people probably have, or at least they think they have anyway, is an earth rod or ground rod. So from the electrical panel, there's a grounding conductor to that, to that rod. Um, that's probably the most common in a residence. The oofer ground is probably most common in commercial buildings these days, especially if they have uh, computer systems. Uh, the oofer is tied to all the rebar and the slab. Article 810 dealing with, uh, in part, ham radio antennas indicates that if the support structures within a 150 foot radius of the ground rod. A separate grounding is not needed, but you certainly can do it. The electrode, the bonding conductor, uh, shall be connected as indicated in A10.21. Um, and we'll cover that in just a minute. In buildings and structures with an inner system bonding termination, most of us have that. Um, that is the point of connection for all bonding to ground. So everything connects to an inner 
system bonding termination, which is usually located uh, right next to the electrical panel. So the, uh, the main panel typically will have that uh, inter-system bonding termination uh, block located on a line next to the, to the ground rod. And as it says, the inter-system bonding termination must be accessible for connection and inspection. And that's a graphic from, uh, from Mike Holt. The next graphic, also from him and modified by me, shows the uh, typical connections to that, and that would be the uh, utility, AC power connects to it, uh, the ham radio antennas and the ham radio transceiver would connect to it, cable TV, telephone, other data uh, circuits that come into the structure. The inter-system bonding termination is connected to the ground rod. So all those things connect to that block and that block connects to the ground rod. And in the next slide, I've modified again one of Mike Holt's uh, drawings and moved a tower next to the house with a three element Yagi. Um, again, you can see the three element Yagi, a feed line choke right at the bottom of, of right at the feed point or the bottom of the antenna. The antenna rotator coax coming down the tower with a rotator cable. Um, those things would go over to the point where they would enter the structure, usually with a bulkhead connector. That bulkhead connector then would be uh, grounded to the inner system bonding termination. Rotator cable, it's a little more difficult to do that, um, but you can, uh, and it's probably a good idea, uh, to have some kind of disc cap to ground uh, to take RF off of those um, five, six, seven, eight wires because they want to act like antennas. Um, ferrite beads to choke RF. Certainly some kind of common mode choke. Um, ferrite bead lump impedance uh, on the coax as at the point where it enters a resonance is another good idea because you want to stop the RF common mode current that typically would flow on the shield of the coax. You want to stop it uh, from getting into the uh, into the radio room. In the next slide, I tried to answer the question about well, what happens if the tower is away from the house and uh, what should you do about um, other ground rods? The NEC says if separate grounding electrodes uh, is used, a bonding jumper between the resonance grounding electrode system and those uh, ground rods. Uh, so there's a bonding, let me rephrase that, there's a bonding jumper of number six wire between each of those ground rods, and I've drawn it in red. So, and they need to be at least six feet apart, according to the NEC. Um, So the, so if you have more than, if you have a ground rod at the tower and ground rods on the way back to the residence, uh, they're to be bonded together. So again, and all that leads back to that inner system bonding termination, everything connects to that point, which is basically the grounding system for the electrical panel. But speaking of which, this is a drawing of uh, kind of a busy electrical panel, but that's the way they are. There are two bus bars uh, each, uh, has 120 volts each side of neutral. Neutral is at zero volts. So you've got uh, uh, 120 uh, of the AC cycle. A 240 breaker bridges those two to get the 240 volts. By the way, it's not 220, it's 240. And in most cases, it's more than 240. Usually it's around 244, 246. In this case, I've drawn a, uh, a linear amplifier plugged into a 120 volt outlet and the transceiver. Those are connected. Um, the ground pin is left in place. Don't cut it off as recommended in some videos. And they tie back to that ground rod. Now here's where some controversy comes in and that's whether or not there is RF in the shack that you can convey away from the equipment with a ground. I'm not sure that that happens, but it's a good idea to keep all of the equipment at the same potential. So you want to bond 
not daisy, not daisy chain, but bond all the equipment to a common point. In this case, I painted a green, but it could be a copper pipe, uh, could be a copper strip, could be plumber's tape, could be any number of things. So all of the equipment is connected to that strip, and then from that strip, a flat, wide, low impedance conductor to the inner system bonding termination. So everything connects again to the ground rod. There's one common point of connection for everything, and that is the inner system bonding termination or the ground rod, which are virtually the same thing at this point. 